Story Recapped here. Today I'm going to explain a comedy and horror film called Girls with Balls. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. During a championship game, the Falcons are down a point against the Vipers. The team captain Hazuki rallies up her team, which consists of Morgan, Jean, Emma, Tatiana, and Dany. To attempt at turning the tides of the game, Hazuki instructs Morgan to switch to defense and delegates the hit to Jean, which upsets Morgan. Nonetheless, Hazuki tells her to stick to the plan. On the other hand, Jean isn't super confident with her assigned position, so Hazuki cheers her on. Meanwhile, Emma isn't doing too well, so she apologizes profusely to Hazuki. But the team captain isn't super strict on her and just tells her to do her best. When the round starts, Emma trips when she tries to hit the ball. Jean gets ready to take the spike. However, Morgan pushes her to the side and uses the fallen Emma as a stepping stool so she can take the spotlight and launch herself to hit the ball. The Falcons win, but Hazuki isn't too happy about what Morgan did, especially when she could have hurt Jean and Emma. While the team huddles in victory with Coach and their mascot Liz, a volleyball scout notices Jean and gives her a calling card. On the way home, Coach drives over a chicken, spreading its innards all over their RV's windshield. Meanwhile, Liz tells everyone about how a scout for Nationals noticed John, triggering Morgan's envy. Tension rises in the team, so Coach steps up and reprimands Morgan for her attitude, reminding her that they're a team and they should be happy for one another. Still, Morgan blames Emma for not hitting the ball, preventing her from getting a good set. She asks Coach whether she deserves the spot for Nationals, which he couldn't answer. Nonetheless, Coach does a good job of keeping group morale up, as they all go back to their cheerful mood of celebrating their win. The team takes a quick stop because their engine is malfunctioning. While Danny tries to check out the problem, the team takes a quick pee break outside because their bathroom isn't working. However, Morgan still isn't showing any team spirit as she chooses to pee in a farther area, cursing Hazuki under her breath as she does so. In the end, Dany manages to fix their engine. As they prepare to take off, the group doesn't notice someone spying on them. A while later, the group finds themselves lost on the road, not knowing their location because the road signs are scarce. Jean notices that the road ahead is blocked, but there's an off-road trail leading to a place called Helheim. But upon inspection, Hazuki doesn't see the area on their map. Due to their predicament, Coach decides to call it a day and set out tomorrow, hoping they can find a nearby hotel to stay in. They follow the road to Helheim, further into the woods and far from the highway. When they arrive, the team immediately complains about the depressive atmosphere. Upon entering the establishment, a modest hunting-themed place greets them. Coach walks up to the barman, hoping to land a few rooms for them, but the barman just points out that their place is full. Instead, Coach just asks for directions so they can get back home. However, the barman doesn't speak a word and just hands a drink to Coach, which he doesn't hesitate to drink. On the other hand, Morgan fools around and dances sexily on top of a table. One of the guys expresses interest in Morgan as he approaches her with a smile. Morgan tries to talk to him, but he's unresponsive. Instead, he immediately grabs Morgan's breast. At the same time, the barman pulls Dany and licks her face. Tatiana slaps the barman for harassing her girlfriend as Morgan slaps the guy. Then, a commotion erupts as Coach gets angry for his team. However, the people inside the bar simply just laugh it off, still unspeaking. When the team leaves, a man paints strange cultish patterns on the back of their vehicle. Inside their RV, Hazuki rightfully scolds her teammates. Although she understands Dany and Tatiana's side, she isn't so lenient on Morgan. The two stare each other down as the team captain threatens to remove Morgan from the team, but the latter still doesn't accept Hazuki as their leader. Coach slams the brake on their RV to reprimand the girls, hoping to stop the infighting. Unable to find a hotel, the team just parks in a random spot to camp out for the night. Thanks to Danny's outdoor skills, they have a satisfying dinner, but Emma discloses she wants to eat more. Hurtful words come Emma's way when Morgan starts to shame her about her body, calling her fat and pointing out how she struggles to jump. Everyone expresses dissent towards Morgan, telling her that she's gone too far with the jokes, especially after Emma walks away. Responsible for taking care of her members, Hazuki follows an upset Emma and comforts her, 
Meanwhile, Jean shares that she will be trained for a spot in the Nationals, requiring her to leave the team if she accepts the offer. Despite everyone else being happy for Jean, Morgan is immediately green with envy, saying that Jean doesn't have what it takes to be in the Nationals. Emma comes back, so Morgan redirects the teasing to her again, but she curses out Morgan. Before Morgan angrily reacts further, Tatiana tries to stop her while Hazuki summons everyone to sleep. A little while later, a knock on the door wakes the girls up, so Dany goes to answer it. Suddenly, a masked man grabs Dany out of the RV. That morning, the team finds themselves outside their vehicle, being held at gunpoint. However, not all of them were taking their predicament seriously. It turns out the men are inbred hunters, the same men they encountered at Helheim. They want to torment the girls, presumably because of their previous behavior. Coach urges them to apologize, but nobody offers a sincere one. Tatiana tries to intimidate the barman, but he pulls out his gun, so she backs away. With a shout, the barman shoots Danny's hand. The perpetrators viciously laugh as the team doesn't hesitate to run away, with Coach leaving the girls behind. But the cruelness is just starting as the hunters chase after the girls. They surround the girls, and in a bout of panic, they all end up running away in different directions. One group is Morgan, Emma, and Hazuki, who all couldn't be more conflicting against each other. While Hazuki leads the way, Emma and Morgan argue non-stop despite their situation. So their captain sets them straight, reminding them that it isn't the time to go against each other. On the other hand, Dany, Tatiana, Liz, and Jean are together. Liz starts going hysterical, blaming Tatiana for the whole mess because she slapped the barman. Jean slaps Liz, trying to calm her down, but apologizes profusely as she regrets her action. Nonetheless, Dany has their back, knowing how to survive in a forest thanks to her experiences. But before she could give them a helpful tip, a bullet goes through her head as the barman snipes her. Without even having a moment to grieve their loss, the girls run away from the oncoming hunters. The group splits up even more as Tatiana breaks off from Liz and John in a moment of delusion. She hopes to find Dany because she's still in denial that her girlfriend is dead. Although worried for her sake, Liz and Jean let Tatiana run away on her own. Jean instructs Liz to leave her falcon cape behind and run away. Meanwhile, Hazuki splits off from Morgan and Emma to scope out the surroundings, knowing that she can be more inconspicuous on her own. She leaves the two to lay low by the rocks, where Morgan stresses her dislike for Tatiana, blaming her for the whole thing because she slapped the barman. However, Emma points out that Morgan isn't entirely innocent either, despite acting like the victim. As Hazuki climbs further into high ground, she finds a pair of feet atop the rocks, but realizes that it's just a decoy. She goes back with the two, seeing that more decoys are placed around the forest. On the other hand, a pair of hunters stumble upon Liz's cape and track them down through their scent, imitating a dog. While Liz and John try to find safety, Liz confesses sleeping with John's boyfriend. Understandably, John begins to become upset. When Liz tries to explain, she accidentally pushes them both to the muddy waters. The two fight about the situation, with John feeling betrayed by her best friend's actions. But the two immediately stop when they hear the hunters on their trail, only to realize that they're peeing in the girl's hiding spot. Hazuki's group doesn't have much luck either, as they spot an actual hunter coming by and not a decoy. Hearing the hunter's bird call, Emma imitates the sound, pinpointing that it's a prairie falcon's call. Although they've been seen, Emma's gimmick was able to buy them a bit of time to confuse the hunter and attempt to take him down. Hazuki and Emma work together while Morgan is rooted in place due to fear. Hazuki does all the fighting, scolding Morgan immediately because she couldn't follow the plan. However, the hunter isn't defeated yet. He stands up and pins Hazuki to the ground. Although she pleads for help, Morgan still does nothing but stare. Thankfully, Emma comes to a rescue as she's able to take the hunter's gun and use it against him. Morgan tries to apologize, but Hazuki just tells her that she's off the team. All the while, John and Liz also split up, thinking that they'd have a better chance of survival that way. Because Liz is shouting while running, the hunters catch up to her first. John, on the other hand, comes across a Boy Scout camp and pleads for help. She tries to warn them about the hunters, but the counselor just brushes her off as a crazy person. She tries to pull one of the kids to safety, but the counselor pepper sprays her for harassing them. John runs away, but the hunters close on her tail come across the camp. The counselor points towards John's direction. However, the men still shoot him dead. Liz, captive by hunters, tries to bargain with him to let her go, 
In a moment of desperation, Liz attempts to put a show for them, but her plan immediately goes sideways when the hunters display attraction towards each other instead. She asks for their attention, but she just ends up getting hit. Meanwhile, Morgan tries to reason with Hazuki not to kick her out of the team. Still, the team captain was certain about her decision, especially after seeing Morgan's aversion to teamwork. Hazuki reminds her that they're a unit, not every man for themselves. But their conversation gets cut short when a hunter rises from the marsh. He attacks Hazuki and subdues Emma, who has a gun. Once more, Hazuki bravely fights against the hunter, but she gets pinned on the ground, the hunter trying to drown her. But this time, Morgan comes up behind them and beheads the assailant with a machete. She helps Hazuki up, but she accidentally slips and stabs her captain. Realizing what she's done, Morgan apologizes, but sees that Emma is about to gain consciousness. So she stabs Hazuki once more, pretending that the hunter killed their captain. Morgan runs to Emma in hysterics, shouting that it was the hunter who did it. So Emma believes her, not knowing any better. On Tatiana's side, she sees that the hunters have taken over their RV. She crawls inside their establishment, noticing that the men are involved in cannibalism. In her escape, she manages to find a functioning car. Unfortunately, a hunter catches her, but she easily overpowers him in a fight. She proceeds to go back inside the car and run over the man. However, she immediately totals the car after driving off a short elevation. All the while, Coach, who feels guilty for running away from the girls, comes across the barman's chihuahua, which bites into his groin. After struggling to get it off him, he rips the dog in half. For the first time in a while, some of the girls, Morgan, Jean, and Emma, reunite. They come across the car Tatiana was trying to drive earlier, but no sign of the girl. They also notice that the vehicle is out of gas. Thankfully, the coast is clear on their RV, so they manage to sneak in and get Jean's phone. But instead of calling the police, Jean calls her boyfriend and cusses him out for cheating on her. When Emma asks whether she can call for help, Jean says her phone battery died. After misspending their time, the hunters have come back to the RV. Cornered, the girls decide on the last Hail Mary and attempt to take down their assailants using their volleyball skills. Although the plan seems to be working at first, balls aren't effective against men with actual weapons. The three try to run away, but one of them manages to catch Morgan with a rope. Left with no choice, John runs and lets Morgan be dragged away. Emma and John hide for the time being, waiting until they're safe before coming out. John proposes to flee, but Emma doesn't want to leave Morgan behind. Reluctantly, John agrees, so Emma suggests that they should split up. When Morgan wakes up, she notices that she's tied alongside Tatiana and Liz, surrounded by the hunters who have their own cult, the barman as their leader. While Morgan is screaming for her life, Liz and Tatiana try to calm her down, telling her not to give the hunters the satisfaction of them pleading for mercy. The hunters show Dany's head to Tatiana, who smiles, still not processing the death of her girlfriend. However, when she notices that Dany's ear is chipped, she starts getting angry again. Because of the blunder, the leader stomps off and sulks on his chair. Outside, Jean climbs up the structure where the girls are held, where she finds a gun before entering. Seeing the cultish scene in front of her, the leader takes a gun with a retractable blade and is about to use it on Morgan. However, she convinces the leader to use it on Tatiana instead. But before he could do so, Jean shoots one of the hunter's heads. As John lets her presence known, she almost gets ambushed from behind, but Emma arrives for the assist, hitting the man's head with a volleyball. With newfound hope, the restrained girls try to fight back while freeing themselves from the chairs. Tatiana manages to break herself free and takes the piercing gun to scout the area. While commotion is breaking loose with the others, Tatiana is getting attacked alone by the leader. Fortunately, Coach comes to the assist, breaking through the walls with a car before fighting against the men. While helping, he apologizes to his team for leaving them behind. Emma manages to defeat an opponent with her machete, while Morgan grabs a knife and tries to escape by herself using Coach's car. But Liz stops her. With zero hesitation, Morgan stabs Liz to death. Heartbroken, Jean runs over to Liz and holds her in her arms as she dies. Meanwhile, Tatiana retaliates against the leader, successfully pinning him down and killing him. Jean tries to exact vengeance against Morgan, but their fight soon becomes one-sided as the latter manages to overpower Jean. But Jean will not go down without a fight, catching Morgan off guard before headbutting her. Coach says farewell to his girls before telling them to run away. Emma gets Jean to the car before Coach is ambushed with more of the hunters back up. He sacrifices himself and sets fire to a propane tank. 
erupting the place in flames. Morgan, who the other girls leave behind, also gets caught in the crossfire. With the final survivors, Emma, Jean, and Tatiana, they visit John's boyfriend to confront his cheating behavior, kicking him in the groin. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like, it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.